Okay, let's talk about PMT. Um, on this worksheet, computer loan worksheet, I have um, a scenario and the student is buying a computer for college. It's a one-year loan from the credit union that gives a good rate to students. The student has saved $200 and the computer will cost $1,000. So we know the cost of the computer is $1,000. We know the student has saved $200. $200. So the total amount to borrow is not $800. That may be true, but we want a formula here. The total to borrow is equal to this minus this. Because we might want to manipulate these. Maybe we decide that we want a more expensive computer, a $1,200 computer, and we only want to put $100 down or something like that. So we want to be able to manipulate this number, and to do that, we have to make sure that this is a formula and it will always update for us. So I'm going to leave it as what we have now. We know that the interest rate is 2.5%. We absolutely have to add the percent here. And then we can do our monthly payment. Now, it already says up here it's for one year. We're going to add a row down here to insert for years, but we know it's a one-year loan, so I'm not going to worry about adding that row in here to manipulate that data. So for the PMT, I am going to use the function box because I want to look at some things in here. And I don't have PMT up here, so I'm just going to type PMT and tell it to go find it. And of course it found it for me right away. And it's in the financial functions if I wanted to search through all the financial functions. They're alphabetized and I could look for PMT. I would find it there as the PMT. Okay, so the function box has three par has five parts, but three of them we absolutely have to do. You can see the bolded here, and that means they ab the formula absolutely needs those. These two parts are optional, and we're not gonna worry about them. And so up here it's starting to build the formula for us. So the rate is this cell, okay? And that's why we have to put in the percent sign because it says right here, the interest rate per period for the loan. But we're not going to pay 2.5% every time we make a payment. That is going to be divided by how many payments we make a year. And this is a 2.5% annual percentage rate, APR, which means we pay monthly, um, but this example that Microsoft gives within the function box is someone who's paying quarterly. But we have this 2.5 divided by. So every month, instead of, we're just paying 12 parts of that 2.5%, um, which ends up being 0 0.002. The MPR is the total number of payments for this loan. And we know it's a one-year loan, but we're not paying it all at once. We're paying it in 12 installments, right? We're paying it monthly. So I'm going to say total number of payments is 12. Or I could do one year times 12, which is 12. So it's kind of silly. But anyway, I'll just put 12. And the, PM, the PV is the present value, or what is it that I'm borrowing? So that's this $800 right there, B6. And B6 might change, so I don't want to type 800, I want to type B6, then I can manipulate these numbers and change the payment. Now here's my answer, right? 67.57, and it's showing as a negative value. Um, a payment is a debt or debit, and so we, we want, if I hit okay at this point, it will come up as a red debit. Okay, and I can change that one of two ways. I can go up here to my formula and say negative PMT, and I'm gonna hit my enter up here, my little thing, and that shows up here as a positive value now. Or what I can do if I forget to do that, when I'm inside the function box, I can say negative B6, and look, it changes to a positive value here. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, negative PMT or negative you know, total amount to borrow, all right? Now, for here, it says now change one year to six months. Well, I want to add a row between total to borrow and interest rate. So I'm gonna click on the row selector here, 16, and I'm gonna right click and choose insert. And it's gonna insert a row here. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, years to payback because I might want to um, manipulate this years to payback. Years to payback. I forgot the S on this one. I will put an S here. Because even though I say change it to six months here, I might want to change it to a year and a half and see how my monthly payment changes. So again, the cost of the computer is the same, 1000 I have 200 down. I'm going to borrow this minus the total cost minus the down payment. And the years to pay back is six months, which is half a year, right? 0.5, half a year. My interest rate is 2.5%, again. I must have formatted these as an extra decimal place. It doesn't matter, that's fine, okay? And so the PMT in this case is going to be only slightly different. So I'm gonna open my function box. Um, PMT, didn't I use that one recently? Oh, I'd have to change it to most recently used. And there's PMT. All right, so my rate is this divided by 12 because I pay every month. My MPR is the total number of payments for the loan. Well, in this case, I have 0.5, which I, I'm not paying 0.5. I'm paying 0.5 times 12, right? So it will, it, will, it will know that half of 12 is six, which is months, because we're always thinking in months for a personal loan. Perhaps a business might use a quarterly loan, but we, as, hu uh, as regular people, usually pay monthly. And then the present value is this to borrow right here. So it's telling me right here, if I wanna do it in six months, it's gonna cost me $134 a month. We know that this one's a one-year loan, but this one is a six month loan. So it's kind of nice to have that years to pay back in here so that we can see or manipulate that uh, rate also. It came up as a negative number, so I'm just gonna say negative PMT and put it in there and then it comes up as a positive value for me. And then maybe I want to pay it off in nine months, which is 0.75 of a year, right? So I can play around with this 1.5 then I could say, well, maybe if I take a year and a half, I wanna buy a more expensive computer and I only wanna put down $150 and I'll take $50 and buy paper and printer ink and stuff like that. So you can start manipulating. The more areas you give it to manipulate, you can manipulate it more. So let's put this back at 0.5. Let's put this back at 1,000 and this back at 200. So when you turn in this worksheet, it'll look like this. And then it says that this will be taken out, one of the, out of one of the expense categories on the first page. So you can see that what this means, this will be taken out, means the payment will be taken out. This $134 or the $67. Which loan should he or she use or do, and out of which category should it be taken? And what that means is you need to look at this back to this first thing and say the expenses, the loan for this computer has to come from somewhere. So is it gonna come from room and board? No, that's probably not something you can take or change. I, you'd need something that's miscellaneous. So the freshman year is 936 enough to pay for this loan? Well, not really. Neither one of them, but you can uh, you can decide you know which one maybe it's going to be entertainment. So if you're going to have a computer, you're going to do more Netflix in your room instead of going to the movie or something like that. So that's what you that's what this is about. So which category would you take it out of and why? And then the second one here is about this bike, this electric bike, and this is just a you know graphic. You can move it anywhere you want to. Um, and the second year the student buys an electric bike as uh, transportation. Create two loan scenarios for this $2,000 bike and you decide the details. So we know that the $2,000 is going to be the same. 
but how much is the down payment, uh, what is the interest rate, what kind of loan could get, they get back, and how many years in this second scenario down here, how many years are you going to take to, to pay it back. The first one, you have to use a one year. This is a one year loan right here. And this is, you can manipulate it one and a half years, two years, something like that. Just imagine that it should be paid off by the time the person graduates school. So, you know, if he's buying the second year, you really only have three years to pay it off. Okay, if you have any questions, um, ask your instructor. And then read the directions here. Put your name in the footer, uh, best fit your column headings before printing, etc. Remember, your name has to be on everything you print out so that we know it's yours that comes out of the printer and not somebody else's. Very good. Have fun.